Hey guys, in this video we'll be looking at how to do an ogive, how to draw an ogive, how to find the first quartile, second quartile and third quartiles as well as how to find percentiles using an ogive. First let's look at what an ogive is. An ogive is simply a graph of cumulative frequency on the vertical axis against the upper boundaries on the horizontal axis. An ogive has an S shape as you can see in this diagram. It does not necessarily have to start from the origin. In fact, most often it does not. Let's start by trying to draw an ogive from a given data set. Let's try this example. The frequency table below shows the time taken by a group of students to complete a task. We have group data here, time in class intervals, and we have the number of students for each class interval. Construct an ogive on the graph paper provided to represent the data. Once again, an ogive is a graph of cumulative frequency against the upper boundary. The first thing to do is to create our columns for our points. First, we do cumulative frequency, which I will label as CF. Cumulative frequency is just the collective frequency. As you go, you keep adding on the frequencies. You keep piling on the frequencies. That is cumulative frequency. How do we do that here? The first class, 1 to 5, cumulative frequency will be 5 because there is no frequency before this. And the next class, 9, how to get the cumulative frequency for the second class? This will be 5 plus 9. So we will get 14. And we repeat the same thing until the final class. So the cumulative frequency for the next class will be 14 plus 16, which makes 30 plus 23, 53, plus 10, 63, finally plus 7, which makes 70. We have all our values of cumulative frequency. You can check to see that the final cumulative frequency value will be the total frequency. This means we have a total of 70 students. You can use your calculator and check. Just sum up all the frequencies and you should get a total of 70. Now that we've done our cumulative frequency, it's time to do the upper boundary. The upper boundary is simply the upper limit of the class plus the lower limit of the next class divided by 2. It is the average of the upper limit of that class and the lower limit of the next class. In this case, our upper boundary would simply be 5 plus 6 divided by 2 and this would give us a value of 5.5 this is the upper boundary for the first class so we do the same for all the other classes as well you will notice a pattern the pattern would be the same you can see from the upper limit this is the upper limit 5 the upper boundary is simply the upper limit plus 0 0.5 this is how we get the upper boundary so we will apply that to all the other classes as well the second class will be 10.5, third class will be 15.5, and then 20.5. All I'm doing is I'm taking all the upper limits and adding 0.5, and 25.5, and finally 30.5. When we draw an ogive, the first value must start with a frequency of 0. So we have to add another class before the first class with frequency of 0. We add another class here. The upper boundary and cumulative frequency is all we need. We don't need any actual data. Frequency 0. So cumulative frequency will be 0 for the class that we've added. Because this class doesn't actually exist. There's nothing in that class. We are adding another class so that we can get our shape for the ogive. The upper boundary of the class before would simply be 0 0.5. How do I get 0 0.5? The upper boundary for the class before will be the lower boundary for the first class. So the lower boundary for the first class, if you notice, for the upper boundary, we added 0 0.5, which means for the lower boundary, we would simply subtract 0 0.5 from the lower limit. 1 minus 0 0.5. That is how we get 0 0.5 as the upper boundary of the class before. Now that we have all our points, we have the cumulative frequency and the upper boundary, 
we can start the construction of our ogive. First, we need to label our axis. For the x axis, remember we are using upper boundaries. So we just label our upper boundaries. I'm going to start with zero. I'm going to break the line and we start with our first upper boundary that is 0 0.5. And then you go on and key in all the other upper boundaries. So just go on to fill it up. Once you have done the values for your scale of the x-axis, make sure to label the x-axis. Remember the x-axis represents the data itself. In our question, the data was the times that the students took to complete a task. This would then be time. We label this as time in minutes. So this is how we label our x-axis. Now we got to go to our y-axis, which is cumulative frequency. For the y-axis, for the vertical axis, cumulative frequency, the maximum value that we saw was 70. So for this graph paper, a suitable scale would be 10, 2 cm to 10 units. And so that's what I'm going to do. So start labeling here, 10, 20, and so on. We're going to label the y-axis as cumulative frequency. So this would be the same regardless of the data y-axis will always be labeled as cumulative frequency. Now that we are done with labeling our axis, we can start plotting the points. When plotting the points, all we have to do is look at the additional columns that we created of cumulative frequency and upper boundary. These are the values that we found earlier. Let's plot them. The first one would be 0, 0 0.5. We always start with the frequency 0. 0 with upper boundary 0 0.5. Let's just mark the point. 0, 0 0.5 would be here. This is our starting point. And then we go on to do the rest. The next point would be 5, 5.5. So label 5, 5.5, 5.5 upper boundary, and so on. So we go on to label all our points. This is what the graph should look like after you've plotted all the points. Next, all we have to do is join all the points with a smooth line. This is what the graph should look like after you're done drawing the smooth line. This is our ogive. Now that we've gotten our ogive, we can start finding the quartiles as well as the percentiles. Quartiles are values that divide the data set into four equal parts. There are three quartiles for each data set. The first quartile will be at the first quarter position. Since it divides the data set equally into four, the first quartile will be at the first quarter position. And so it would be one over four multiplied by the total frequency n. This is just to find the first quartile position. You would notice that this is actually a value of frequency. This is not a value of the data itself, from the data. After finding the first quartile position, we are going to use our ogive to find the first quartile value. The same goes for the other quartiles as well as the percentile. The second quartile will be exactly in the middle position of the data set. And so it is actually the median. The second quartile is the median. Second quartile will be at the half position, 1 over 2 multiplied by total frequency. The third quartile will be at the third quarter position, 3 over 4 multiplied by total frequency. These are the position of the quartiles. And the percentile position, a percentile is a value that divides the data set into 100 equal parts. And so there are 99 percentiles. To find the percentile position, if you are looking for the nth percentile, 3rd, 4th, 5th, 6th percentile, nth percentile, that would be n divided by 100 multiplied by total frequency. This is how we get the positions of quartiles and percentiles. Let's look at how to find the quartile using our example. Use the ogive to determine the first quartile, the median, and the third quartile. We're going to look for Q1, Q2, and Q3. Before we find Q1, Q2, Q3, we need to find their positions first. Let's use the formula. Q1 position would be equals to, this is just the position, this is not the actual quartile, 1 over 4 
multiplied by total frequency. In our case, our total frequency is 70. 1 over 4 times 70. This will give us a value of 17.5. This is the position of the first quartile. Let's find all the positions first before we actually define the quartiles. Q2 position, this is the median. This would be at the middle position that would be half of the total frequency which is 35 and finally the Q3 position the position of the third quartile would simply be at the three quarter position of the data set and that would be 52.5 now that we have the positions we can find the actual quartiles let's start with the first quartile the first quartile position is 17.5 now we need to look at our ogive Remember that the position value is the value of the frequency. So we start with the vertical axis and look for the position. Q1 is at 17.5, which would be here between 17 and 18. So what we're going to do is interpolation. You draw a line, you draw a vertical line, dotted line, then you draw a horizontal line to get the actual value. So now we are going to find the actual first quarter. Draw a horizontal line down here to the axis and you will get this value. This value is the first quarter. Let's label the value on the graph itself. Here the value would be this is 10.5 to 15.5. Each box is 0 0.5 which means this would be 1.25 this would represent 1.25 how did i get this since the scale the 10 boxes here have a value of 5 each box is 5 divided by 10 which is 0 0.5 so what we will get is 11.75 this is 11.75 so this is the actual first quarter let's write the answer Q1 is equals to 11.75 minutes. Remember, this is the data from the data set. Our data set is time. So 11.75 minutes. We do the same thing for Q2 and Q3. Let's try that. Q2 is at the 35 position. We go back to our ogive and go to the position of 35, which is here. Same thing, we are going to use interpolation. All you do is you draw a line to the ogive dotted line. This is how you show you're working. And from here, all we have to do is draw a line down, down to the x axis, a vertical line. All right. Once we've done that, now we can find our value. So this is the Q2 value again label the value on the graph this is also 1.25 we have one and a half boxes and so this value would be 16.75 this is q2 q2 equals to 16.75 minutes let's find the third quarter third quarter is at position 52.5 let's look at 52.5 52.5 would be in between 52 and 53 so here once again interpolation all we have to do draw a line to the ogive once you've drawn a line to the ogive dotted line and then you draw a vertical line to the axis The value that we will get is this. This is very close to 20.5. So we are going to leave it as 20.5. Q3 is 20.5 minutes. The same method can be applied to percentiles as well. You find the percentile position and you use interpolation on your ogive and you find the actual value of the percentile. If you've learned something from this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button guys. Thank you very much for doing that. Really does help. And if you think this video will be helpful to your friends, do share it with them. I will be producing at least one video a week. If 
you want to see more videos like this do subscribe i will see you guys in the next video